Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss a problem on circular arrangements. Circular arrangements as a question type is feared by many students. They just don't know how to go about solving these questions. But let me tell you, if you attempt it properly in a systematic manner, circular arrangements can be handled very easily. So let's go to the problem and see how it's done. The problem here gives some data about six men who represent six different companies and who have come for a meeting where they are sitting in a circular arrangement. They are wearing shirts of different colors. We need to figure out their seating arrangement based on the data given in the question. Now my advice here for you would be to pause the video for some time and take a look at the problem, read it carefully and attempt it on your own first. Go to the solution only when you are done with attempting the question on your own. So let's try solving the problem now. The first step would be to create a structure like this. As you can see, it's divided into six box shaped structures and each structure is further divided into three parts. So the topmost part would have the name of the person, the second part would have the shirt color and the third, the organization this person represents. So let's go to the statements and see how it's done. Let's first look at statement eight which says that the person wearing a white shirt is sitting to the immediate right of Unilever's representative. Now we don't have any data filled in this structure as yet. So we can start from anywhere. So let's just place Unilever in the bottom most vacant cell in the table. Now the person in white shirt is sitting one position to the right of this person. One position right would be the cell which is highlighted now. So we write white into it and move forward. The next statement that we use would be statement 5. It says that Maxi is wearing a white shirt. We had just written white in this box. So let's just put Maxi's name there as well. The statement also says that Maxi is sitting to the immediate left of the person who is wearing a red shirt. Now look at it like this. Since Maxi is to the immediate left of the person who is wearing a red shirt, we can also say that the person who is wearing the red shirt would be on the immediate right of Maxi. The immediate right of Maxi would be this box. We put red here in this box and move forward. The next statement we use would be statement 4. It tells us that the only person who is sitting between Drax and Maxi is wearing a pink shirt. Maxi is placed in the highlighted box. The two possible positions for Drax are now highlighted in yellow. One box is two places to the right of Maxi and the other boxes two places to the left. Now the man in pink shirt needs to be placed between Maxi and Drax. But if you look at the box that's highlighted on the right of Maxi, the color red is already placed between them. It means that it cannot be occupied by pink. So this box is ruled out. It means that Drax has to be placed in the box that's highlighted now. So we put Drax name into it and write pink in the box between Drax box and Maxi's box. The next statement we use would be statement 9. It tells us that Phil, who is wearing a blue shirt and who is from GE, is sitting at a position that's diametrically opposite that of the person who is in pink shirt. We had just written pink in this box which is highlighted now. The diametrically opposite position would be the one that's highlighted in yellow now. So we can easily fill fill blue and GE in this box highlighted in yellow. The next statement we use would be statement 7. It says that G's representative is sitting to the immediate left of the person who is wearing a brown shirt. It means that the person in the brown shirt would be sitting to the immediate right of the person who is from GE, who we know is Phil and whose box is highlighted now. So the man in brown can be placed one position to the right of this box. Let's look at our next statement which is statement 3. It states that Karamveer is neither from Unilever nor wearing a red shirt. Now there are three places in the structure in which Karamveer can be placed. These three places are now highlighted in yellow color. But this is ruled out because Karamveer is not from Unilever. And this one is ruled out because Karamveer is not wearing a shirt of red color. So Karamveer has to be placed in this third box. Now we will use statement 10. There are two places to place Aston in the structure. The two that are highlighted. 
but since Aston is not wearing a red shirt, this place is ruled out. So we put Aston's name in this box. The next two steps would not require the use of any statement. Look at the highlighted box. It's the only box in the structure that does not have a color field. And the only color that's left now is black. So it's obvious that this box has to be filled with black. Similarly, look at the box that's highlighted now. This is the only box in which there is no name filled. And the only person whose name does not appear on the table as yet is Lalith. So it's obvious now that this box needs to be filled with Lalith. Let's fill this up and move to the next statement. The next statement that we use would be statement 6. It states that the person in black shirt is sitting at a position diametrically opposite that of Nestle's representative. The box highlighted in yellow belongs to the person who is wearing the black shirt. The diametrically opposite position would be the box that's highlighted in blue now. It's obvious that Nestle's representative is Lalith and he is occupying this box. So let's write Nestle in this box. Next we will use statement 1 which states that the Microsoft's representative is wearing neither a black nor a brown shirt. There are three places in the structure in which Microsoft can be placed, highlighted in yellow now. This is ruled out because he is not wearing a black shirt. This place is also ruled out because he is not wearing a brown shirt. And so Microsoft goes to this third box. So this person is Maxi. Let's look at the next statement which is statement 2. It states that the Google's representative is not wearing a black shirt. So Google cannot appear in this box. And the only position left where we can place Google is now this highlighted box. So we write Google here and move forward. Now there's just one box left, the one highlighted in yellow. And there's just one company left, IBM. So we put IBM into it and with this we complete our structure. So we could manage this very very easily. Our next problem would also be based on circular arrangements. But it would be slightly different. In this question, all the people were assumed to be facing the center of the table. But not all the problems are like this. So in the next problem, there will be a situation in which some people would be facing away from the center of the table. So stay tuned. I'll discuss this next time. Goodbye.